Amen. Well, I want to welcome everybody again to our Friday night fire starters or our Bible study. <clears throat> and of course, I want to welcome everybody in our Bible study and also all those out there that are will be viewing this video, YouTube, Facebook, and just even those that just come across this video um, as they're just, you know, going through the website and different things that, you know, that this message encourages you, that this message tonight encourages all of us. Amen. And um, I just want to just also thank everybody just for uh, just for hanging in there. Just uh, right now, as, as we know, we're going through this pandemic and we're, we're not here in the Bible study like we usually were and doing our prayer requests and, and praise reports. And, and I just want to just thank everybody. And I'm sure that God honors that, that everybody's just hanging in there. Everybody's still staying in tune with the Bible study as far as the live stream and, and the church services, uh, midweek service and Sunday live stream and um just that, that i mean i know it's not the same as it used to be it's not the same as physically being in church but um you know what sometimes with, with this situation like we're going through the live stream there's sometimes that people can can you know they, they they realize that it's not the same and some people can uh kind of start falling away or start getting dry in their walk you know and and slowly and slowly maybe stop live streaming or stop praying or reading as much but i see everybody um every week i just tuned into the bible study and and I, i'm just grateful and i like i said i know god honors that god honors that that the, through the situation and all this stuff that's taking place around us that everybody just keeps fighting and everybody just keeps moving forward amen and of course we want to go ahead and continue to lift up just lift up our church and lift up our our, our brothers and sisters uh, just that are going through these things that we're going through right now with sicknesses and and uh, I, I mean I know a lot of us are seeing that there's people coming back to the church a lot of us are are coming back now are coming out of this sickness and this this virus that that a lot of people uh, 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 caught and um, it's just good to see people coming back that they're just they're just still in the fight amen and uh, we want to continue to pray for those that are still out that are still dealing with sicknesses or or, or, or uh, their family is sick and we want to just pray for healing upon their body and also um, we want to just lift up the families also that have lost somebody there's just so many people right now that are just passing away there's so many people just around us in our families and our and in our church and just friends and, and co-workers and different things it seems like it seems honestly like every week I'm hearing that at least two people have have, have, have passed away and just it's like almost sometimes every other day there's just so much going on right now at this time and and even my family we just we we had a loss in our family uh, 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 it, it really hit close to home on this and and um, we just want to just continue to pray for everybody I want to pray for the Velasquez family my family members and just that God comforts them and brings them peace at this time and and it just man it, it was just a, a hard loss for for all of us, you know, in my family that, that we're feeling this and in your families also that are dealing with this loss at this time, you know, and, and, and just family members or loved ones or friends, close friends that, that you may have lost during this thing. And like I said, it just seems like, like man, it's just happening so, so often lately. And um, we just want to continue just to, to pray for everyone, continue to pray for our Bible studies. And, and all you guys out there, my wife and I, we continue to pray for you guys. I pray for you guys daily and just that, that God continues to just protect you guys and keep you healthy. And we want to pray for for uh, uh, our loved ones, our family members. We want to lift up uh, uh, Sister Chula's daughter, Crystal, and just ask for a healing upon her body. And that you bring her a, a speedy recovery, amen, that, that she's just covered by the blood of Jesus. And we also want to just continue to lift up uh, our brother Jose and his wife Victoria. Just that, that you just continue to bring healing upon Jose's body. And, and I talked to him today and just that, that, you know, these things that we go through, these anxiety and just health issues that, you know, through it all, we got to just still remain focused on God. And, and a lot of times we don't understand the things we go through or why we go through them or, or the tough battles that we, that we deal with. And, um, uh, we just got to continue to just stay strong and keep moving forward. Like I said last time, you know, sometimes these trials that we go through, you know, we get we get lessons in them. And we come out the other end and we see 
how what God showed us and what God God taught us in certain things that we go through. But there are times that we go through things in our life that we don't understand. That we come out on the other end or maybe we lost a, a family member or somebody that was good and we don't understand it or we don't understand why this happened or why that happened or why we're going through this. And maybe we won't understand it until the day we get to heaven. Maybe God will let us know until then why we went through the things that we went through. Amen. And like I said, I just want to continue to pray for, for Brother Paul and his wife Tina and their kids and home and my mom and dad and their household and and and, and uh, Brother Danny and Ceci and my brother Joe and Blanca and, and, and Sister Chula and um, Brother Angel and Sister Jessica and, and Jose and Victoria. We just want to continue to just Come in, agree, come in agreement and, and just lift each other up. And I say these names because, you know, when we pray for each other, you know, these names, these situations, we, you know, we, we need to take these to our prayer closet. We need to take these and continue to lift, lift up our brothers and sisters daily. Amen. And we want to also just uh, uh, give a special prayer request. We want to lift up Pastor Dandridge tonight. I mean, I know a, a, a lot of you know who he is. He's came to our church and, and preached and and. And right now he's going through a, a tough loss. You know, his wife went to, to be with the Lord. His wife went home to be with the Lord. And, and we know his, 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 uh, his daughter's hospitalized right now because just uh, some things that took place. But we want to just continue to pray for him. That Just lift him up in prayer that God just right now just brings that, that, that peace in his heart and just comforts him at this time of loss. Amen. God strengthens him. And we want to just continue to lift him up and and. Even all those that are out there, all those tonight that are, are well, if you may come across the video and watch it or get encouraged by the message, we want to just, just come in agreement and just pray for your family. Pray for your loved ones. Pray for the people that are out there sick in the land. Amen? Because there's a lot of sickness going on out there. And there's not only sickness, but there's just a lot of situations going on in this world around us. Amen? But we want to just continue to... Just uh, come in agreement and be in prayer with one another. And um, as uh, moving on to the, the announcements, we just want to uh, acknowledge tomorrow, of course, is Saturday the 16th. There's prayer at our church there, Praise Chapel in Baldwin Park. And we know that prayer starts at 8 o'clock in the morning, 8 to 9. If um, you just want to go out and just, just, get in, just get in tune with God. Amen. And uh, also to the women, there is a women's discipleship taking place tomorrow that's at 10 o'clock but that is online only so um i'm not sure on the information with that huh? facebook. it's on facebook uh praise chapel ball apart facebook you can you can get plugged in through there tomorrow for the women's discipleship online at 10 o'clock amen of course uh, uh, uh sunday we got our service uh prayer starts at 9 service will start at 9 30. just to remind you Worship starts at 9.30, and the service starts to get going at 10 o'clock. Amen. And uh, Wednesday, we're back in our midweek service. And next Friday, the 22nd, we are back here uh, for fire starters for our Bible study series. Amen. And um, any other announcements that you know? All right. So, um, uh, let's see. Moving on. I think that's it. Yeah. All right, so we're going to go ahead and uh, get into tonight's lesson. Uh, probably not going to be really a long lesson tonight, but um, it's a good one, though. But uh, this is going to be lesson number two in our series that we started last week. We started a, a, a series, if you guys will remember, uh, last week in lesson number one. Um, it was titled, A Change is Going to Come. And that's the, the title of the series that we're going through. And um, as you guys know that when we're in the series, uh, this Bible study as well as the other Bible studies in, in our church, uh, we're all on one page and we're all doing this lesson. Um, you know, we're all going through the series every week, uh, you know, on the same page. Amen. So um, this lesson tonight is lesson number two in the series. And this one is titled... Uh, it's in the series, A Change is Going to Come, but it's titled, It's Time to Make Up Your Mind. Amen. It's time to make up your mind. And we're going to be in the book of Joshua, chapter 24, uh, verse 13 through 15. 
And I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version. So if you have your Bibles there at home, you can turn to the book of Joshua, chapter 24, verse 13. And while you guys find that, I'm just going to open up in prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight, Lord. And as always, Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the sacrifice that was made. We thank you for our salvation, for the guidance and the direction that you have given us in our life to bring us where we are at in our walk with you, Father. Lord, we thank you today that we have breath in our lungs, that we are healthy, Lord God, that we are here serving you, that we have been called, that the scales have fallen off of our eyes, Lord God, and that we are no longer blind, but that we can see you, we can see the way, the truth, and the life, Father God. And Lord, we pray tonight, Lord, that whatever is taking place, whatever is happening around us, Lord, and I know there is much and many things that are taking place in our lives and around us at this time, Lord, but I pray that at this moment that we get into your word, Father, that it doesn't cloud our mind, that it doesn't fog our mind, Lord God, but that our mind is clear and open, our hearts are open to be receiving to your word tonight, Father, and that this word, that it, that it penetrate our heart, Father, that it pierce our heart, Lord God, and I pray that this word that goes out tonight, Lord God, that it just impact those out there, including myself, and all those that are listening, our Bible study, and those out there that may come across this word, those that may come across this message that are not saved, that are maybe up against the fence, Father God, I pray that this message doesn't go in one ear and out the other, but it penetrate and it be applied into their life, Father. Lord, we thank you. We give you the praise and the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. So, Joshua chapter 24, verse 13 through 15. It says this, it says, I have given you a land for which you did not labor, and cities which you did not build, and you dwell in them. You eat of the vineyards and olive groves which you did not plant. Now therefore, fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord, and if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. And I'm sure many of us have that probably in our homes, in our living rooms, or and even some of us in our bathrooms where we see that, or we may see it in other people's houses, little plaques with that saying on there, because it says a lot, as it says, but for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And this story here that, that we read this scripture out of our main text tonight, if we read into the story, or you can read up on the story later, but if we read into the chapter, and like I always say, reading before and after is always good because it allows us to understand the story, and it allows us to grasp it better and understand what is taking place. And in this story, we read, we've read that, that we can see that at this time, I'm, I'm sure these, the people of, of Israel, it was an exciting time for the people. Because they had defeated their enemies and they, they claimed the promised land. We know that the Bible tells us before that, that Moses was going to lead the people into the promised land. But we know that the Bible tells us that, uh, you know, due to the complaining and the murmuring of the Israelites, they ended up getting stuck in the desert for 40 years. So now here they are 40 years later and the ancestors, their, their generations, the offspring is being led into the promised land by Joshua. God has now appointed Joshua to lead them into the promised land. And here at this time, Joshua is already in his elder ages. But they get here and they get to the promised land and each, each of the tribes had received their inheritance and now they can kind of feel maybe they can settle down a little bit. You know, it was a time to kind of maybe even get a little relaxed. It was a time of hope and prosperity and blessings. But then again, on the other hand, it was also a dangerous time for the people. 
And what I mean when I say dangerous is because, you know, the, they, they got to the promised land and, and they were there and they won the battles and God got them through the fights and the wars and now they're here at the promised land. And maybe they might feel, okay, we can kind of put our feet up a little bit. Maybe it's time we can relax a little bit. God got us through the battles. Now we're kind of re receiving the reward here. And they maybe felt that they could kind of relax for a little bit. But like I said, it was a dangerous time because it was dangerous in the sense that, that now that they were comfortable, that maybe they might fall into the idolatrous religion of the, Canaan, of the Canaanites who still lived around them. They had to be mindful of their surroundings because, yeah, now, you know, they got through this. God got them through it. Now they're kind of relaxing. They're in the promised land. They're receiving the rewards there. But the Canaanites were serving other gods. And they had to be mindful of that. And it's just like us in our walk today because sometimes we go, we get in certain environments and maybe we've been going to church a couple of years. Maybe we're praying and we're in our word and we feel that we can, we're okay to be in these certain environments. You know what, I can go around these people again. Anyways, I'm strong. This, it's not going to get to me. I can hang out here as much as I want. I can be around these people as much as I want. Anyways, I'm stronger than that. But we got to be mindful not to, keep our, not to let our guard fall down. Because when the guard comes down, then we get a little vulnerable into the things around us. They might start seeping in a little bit. They might start influencing us a little bit. And then before we know it, we might start kind of talking back like that again. We may start acting like that again. We may start doing things that we maybe used to do and we didn't realize it because our guard, got, uh, our guard went down. And we got to be mindful of these things. And that's kind of what's happening here with the people of Israel. They were here in the promised land, but God wants them to know, be careful. Be mindful. Keep your guard up. They might have felt like they, they, they could uh, let their guard go down. Amen. But God doesn't want the Israelites being half-hearted. God didn't want them living uh, for living for one God on one hand and then living for him on one hand and then living for the God, the gods of, of, of Canaanite on the other hand. God wants them to be wholehearted. That's just what he want, how he wants us to be in our life. The Bible tells us that God doesn't want us to be half-hearted. He doesn't want us to be up against the fence. He doesn't want us to have one foot in and one foot out. The Bible says he doesn't want us to be lukewarm. We're either cold or we're hot. We're either moving forward or we're moving back. And as God tells us, as he says here in our text, our main text, I have given you a land for which you did not labor and cities which you did not build and you dwell in them. You eat of the vineyards and the olive groves which you did not grow. What he's telling the people here is don't forget what I gave you. Don't forget what I did for you. Don't forget. He's telling them here, don't forget what I did for your fathers, your forefathers, that I took them out of Egypt. That I rescued them from the life of slavery and captivity that they were in. Now you guys, the generation that came down, I got you through the battles. I got you through the fights. And now that you're comfortable here, don't forget those things. Don't forget what I got you through. That's what he's telling him when he says, you know, I've given you land that you did not labor. Cities that you didn't build. Vineyards with olive groves that you didn't plant. And it's the same thing with us. God wants us to remember, don't forget the things that I took you out of. Don't forget the Egypt that I took you out of. And we all got different Egypts in our life. We've all been rescued from an Egypt. That Egypt could have been drugs. It could have been alcohol. It could have been just a, 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 a life of being a cold-hearted person. It could be different things. Just maybe even a life of being lost in the world. Not knowing God. And God reminds us here, don't forget your Egypt. Don't forget where I took you out of. Even though you get comfortable in your walk, even though you get comfortable with what you're doing, don't forget it and don't let your guard down. 
You know, we know that there's people that, that, that you know, I've, I've met a lot of different people in my life. I'm sure you have. And we run across people in our lives that say they serve this God and they serve that God. And we know there's other different things. And there's the Torah and there's, there's this book and there's that book. And there's Buddha and there's Mohammed. And, and there's all these different things. And like I said before, like I've said in the past, you know, all these different people, Buddha and Mohammed, all these things, all these people said to, that they claim to know the truth. But Jesus Christ was the only one that said, I am the truth. I am the way and I am the life. Amen. And of course, there's people that just don't believe in God at all. We know that there's those atheists out there, people that just say, you know, I just believe in the universe. You know, I believe in the stars and I believe that, I don't know, our spirit goes to the outer space. I don't know. Some people just have different type of beliefs on on the afterlife or, or, or where they go or, or what, what really happens or the Big Bang Theory and all these different things that people think. But we know there's people that just say there is no God. But see, then when times get tough, things start changing. When there comes a time in someone's life that man's not going to help you. And we all get to that point in our life. There, there may be situations that, that we get through on certain things, but there's going to come a time in your life that man's not going to be able to help you with. There's going to come a time in everybody's life where maybe the doctor can't help you. Maybe the medicine can't help you. Maybe this person or that person or your mom or dad, they can't help you. And you're going to need to call upon God. Amen. I was reading this story of, of uh, some of you may know who Chuck Smith is. Chuck Smith is the one, I believe, he founded uh, Calvary Chapel. And uh, Chuck Smith, I heard his sermons many times. He's, he's a, he was a good pastor and preacher. And he's, he's, you know, went home to be with the Lord already. But he was talking one time and he was, uh, a story he was saying, he was talking about his dad. And, and I just listened to the story he was saying, and he was saying that, that he remembers being small and that his dad taking on places and that everywhere his dad went, his dad ministered to people. He said, I always remember my dad witnessing to people no matter where we went, at his job, at the store, wherever. He said, my dad even got fired from a job for ministering to somebody. And he said that one time his dad worked at a, a, realty, a realty office. A realty office? Okay realtor office and I guess he was giving the word of God to the, the owner and some people there at work and and he said that uh, that the realtor said you know um, I don't ever want to hear you giving giving that word of Jesus to me or my wife he says don't ever do that again and uh, you know or, or you're not gonna you're not gonna work here and like I said he had already got fired from other jobs and because that's where his heart was at his heart, was he had a passion for God. He had a passion for giving the gospel to people. And trust me, he's going to be rewarded for that. And it says that the guy told him, you know, I just don't want you giving that to me and my, my wife. Don't give us that, that Jesus stuff. And, and, he, and he says, he goes on to say that some time went by and that the owner's wife got seriously ill and needed emergency surgery. And he says when, it, when, it's, when the owner's wife got got sick and was emergency surgery he said who do you think he called he called his dad and he said he remembers that his dad told him that Chuck Smith was small at the time he said get ready you're going to come with me we're going to the hospital we're going to go pray for somebody and they went and they went and, and prayed for him and he said that they were praying for this woman and they, they realized there at the hospital that this woman that the owner's wife desperately needed a, a, a blood and she needed a, a blood match. So this guy, uh, his dad, you know, he tested and of course it didn't match. But he said he even got him tested. He said, my father had me tested there to see if my blood matched. And it did. And, they, and he donated blood. He said, my son's going to donate some blood. And they donated the blood. And that blood that Chuck Smith donated at a young age saved the woman's life. And we see here in the story that the Lord came through and healed her but that story that we look at it's 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 a typical story with many people it's a typical story with many people today 
They don't want anything to do with God or they don't want anything to do with the true God until, until they're in some kind of desperate need or some kind of desperate position. Then they want to come, uh, somebody to come to the rescue. Then they call on God to come to the rescue. In this story, this man, that, that the owner of the company, his God was money. That's all he cared about. Nothing else but money. Nothing else but making the business grow. Don't scare people away with that Jesus stuff. He just cared about, about the dollars. And that was, that was like his God. That was what he idolized. But with the wife's life on the line, all this money that he had, it wasn't going to help him. It wasn't going to save her. You guys remember too what I talked about, about Robin Williams uh, a while back when I was ministering last time. When I said about Robin Williams being a rich man and a wealthy man and a, and a, and a man with a lot of power in Hollywood and, and, and he knew a lot of people. He could have called people up and, and made things happen and got you here or got tickets for you there and all these things. But he was going through a situation in his life that none of that was able to help him with. The wealth, the power, the position he was in. None of that was able to help him with the, deal, with the situation that he was dealing with. And we know that because he ended up taking his own life. Millionaire, and he killed himself. And it, it shows right there that, that money and fame and power, all that's not going to help you through everything. It's going to pay some bills, but it, it's not going to help you. Man can't always, always solve the problems. In Isaiah chapter 47, verse 13, it says, You are wearied in the multitude of your counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, and the monthly uh, prognosticators stand up and save you from what shall come upon you. Let them save you now. And that's how it is. Like I said, when people, they, they, they don't take the time to open their Bible up. They don't take the time to pray and thank God just for getting up in the morning. But then when, when, when the bottom falls out on them, there they are. Hey, can you, can, you, can you pray for me? Even the ones that have even told us, oh, man, you're still going to church. You're still doing this. You're still doing that. Oh, man, you're not who you used to be. But then when things go wrong in their life, they're calling us up. Hey, my brother, can you pray for me? Can you come down? Can you, can you, can you uh, lay hands on somebody for me? And that's what the Christian heart is, is that we don't say, oh, no, now you need us, forget it. No, you know what? We'll be right there. Because that's what God wants us to do. That's what God called us for. He didn't call us just to be saved and sit in the, in the pew and in the pillar and hear the message. He wants us to go out. He wants us to give the gospel, give the word, help people, save people, lead them to Christ. That's why when those people call, we say, you know what, we'll be right there. Like I said last time, people have called, we went to hospitals and prayed for people. I'm sure you have too. I heard just the other day, somebody was was talking about that, about, about somebody with, um, you know, they kind of give them a lot of uh, grief about different things and, and a family member says this and that, but then, but then, you know, they call, they call upon them. Man, we need you right now. And I, and I, in this message, I mean, I know our Bible study that is listening. I, I know we're all saved, but you know, this message tonight is a good message for, for those out there that may be coming across this message that are not saved. Or maybe those people that are saved, but they're on the fence. Maybe they got one foot in and one foot out. And not only that, it's this, this message is for us as saved Christians that this is the word we need to get out to people. That's what God wants us to do. He wants he, us to let people know it's time to make up your mind. What are you going to do? Like Pastor was saying, it's time to get your affairs in order. I can't express it enough how, how we see what this world's going through. Man, nowadays you turn on the TV and nothing's even surprising anymore. I mean, there's so much going on with this politics, with, with this virus, with, uh, with uprisings, with all these things. Man, nothing's really shocking anymore. Because we're, we're in a whole new time. 
People say, man, when is it going to go back to normal? I think this is the new normal. We're going on a year now with all this stuff. And when I was talking earlier about, you know, like I said about some people worship this God and, and that God and different things like that. You know, when I say about worshiping the true God, about, about Jesus Christ and about the sacrifice he made for us. When people worship other gods, it's not always necessarily just like, you know, these, these other false idols or images or, or, or uh, like I said, Buddha and all these different type of things. But what a lot of people fail to realize is that that worshiping a false god can be, like I said, money. It can be fame. It can be fortune. It can be anything that you're putting in front of God. Anything that you're putting first in your life. Anything that you're putting before anything else. That's what you're idolizing. But it's time that we need to make up our mind. What are we going to do? Time's getting short, people. Time, I mean, I, it's been said for a long time already. We're in the last days. We're in the last days. I think we realize now, man, we're in the last days. All of us have, have, have been in those situations in, in our life. I think everybody's been there, whether you're uh, I probably when we're unsaved, we get we go through certain things in our life where we get in a jam and we say, God, help us out of this one. You guys remember when you said that? You're in a certain jam. God, if you get me out of this one, I'll go to church tomorrow. God, if you help me out of this situation, I, 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 man, I really will go to church. And then God gets us out of the situation and come Sunday, we're still not at church. I, I, I'm guilty of that myself. There's been times in my life where I've been in jams before I was saved and I was running around the streets and I got in situations and, man, God, help me out of this jam. Help me out of just this one time and I'll go to church on Sunday. Sunday comes, I'm still not at church. We got to get out of the jam and we forget about it. But like it says in our main text, again, I have given you a land for which you did not labor. And cities which you did not build. And you dwell in them. You eat of the vineyards and the olive groves which you did not plant. Again, God is telling us, don't forget anything. Don't forget what I've done for you. And I love how it goes at the end and it closes with, But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We're not going to forget what he did for us. As, me, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen? That's the question that we need to be asking family members today. That's the question we need to be asking friends and loved ones when we see them. Hey, it's time to make up your mind. People see us. Hey, are you still going to church? Hey, I see that you know, you're still serving. I see this and that. You know what? That's that, that's that opportunity. We need to be telling people it's time to make up your mind. Now there's so many people that, so many situations that people are passing away and different things. It's time to get right with God, amen? I'm sure many of you may remember, like I said before, in our past, my house was upside down. Our house was a mess. My wife and I fighting all the time, the kids crying, cussing, slamming doors, me leaving, all these different things that we used to do. But see, God restored that. God brought back joy into the home. He brought back love. He brought back unity into the home. We were already both with our hands up. That's it. We're done. Forget it. Who cares? That was the state of mind we were in. But once we went and, and we went to church, and hey, let's check this out. But you know what? It wasn't even just about that. God touched us. God moved in our life. Now our, our home is totally restored of course we get in disagreements we all do every marriage marriage couple is going to get in disagreements there's no perfect marriage out there but it's all about how we handle it how we handle the disagreements sometimes you just sometimes you just gotta say i'm sorry there may be times we don't even feel it's all our fault but we gotta just say we're sorry and we move on it, there's, that we compromise with one another. 
And it's just a piece. And, and like I always say, I, I always bring it up all the time. It's just a piece that, that, that God brings that surpasses all understanding. That's why people may say, man, I remember I remember when it used to be like that in your house. I remember the way things used to be. People still tell me to this day about, about Valerie's, uh, Valerie's testimony that she gave, what, four years ago. They're at the church making everybody cry in the church. And, she, and, 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 and this was a 10-year-old a girl at the time. Was it 10? How old was she? 11, 11 or 10? And they asked her to go up and give a testimony. And I, and I didn't even coach her. She, she asked, what's a testimony? And all we told her was, you know what a testimony is when you just talk about, you know, what God did for us. What God did for you. The changes that he did. That's all we said. And she went up there and she started talking about how things used to be in the house. But that it doesn't happen like that no more. Those things don't exist no more. I mean, she started crying, and, and everybody in the church was crying because it was truth, and it just showed how God restores homes, how God restores marriages and lives. That's why I, I love that saying, but as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord because God brought restoration in this house. It used to be upside down, but now we're grounded here. Amen? And we asked the question, you got to make up your mind. You know, I talk about our house and how things used to be. And, and, and I'm sure there, there's many people that, ha that have homes like that. Sorry. You know, there's people that have homes right now at the, at this time like that. And you know, it, it, I see, I mean, I sometimes I see pictures or I see videos of and, and, and media of, of people and like gang members and like certain things and, and I see them, the way they're raising their kid. And I'm not, I'm not trying to be a hypocrite or anything like that. We were all lost at one time, but I think, man, you know, was I, was I ever that? I mean, I, I see people sometimes you know, they, they dress their kid up like a little five-year-old kid and they're dressing him up like a gangster and they're putting a bandana on his forehead and they're trying to get him to throw little gang signs and, and they're showing him cuss words and, and the dad's standing there and they got the little four-year-old in the same clothes standing there and it's like, man, what are you teaching your kid? Yeah, you're, you're showing it, it may look cute. Oh, look at he looks cute like that. But what are you teaching your kid? What are you teaching your kid? You're teaching them how to cuss and how to talk and, and, and flipping people off. And, and man, like sometimes when you go somewhere and you see a little kid in the supermarket and he's cussing a storm left and right and he's flipping people off sitting in the grocery basket and five years old and he's flipping people off and all these things. And you can't help but think, man, he had to have got that from home. That comes from the home. And that's what we're talking about, man, the way things are and the way the way media and the world portrays how we should be, how we should be raising our kids. But God says different. God wants you to, to, to get your affairs in order. God wants to restore your house. God wants to restore your marriage. God wants you to stand up one, say, one day and say, you know what? As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. It's time to make up our minds. I know one thing. God restored my home. Like I said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the, serve the Lord. And no one can ever say, you know, God never done anything for me. No one can ever say, well, maybe he done that, but what has God done for me? Because God has done something for all of us. And that's in John 3.16. And everybody's heard John 3.16. That God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only son. So that whoever shall believe in him shall not perish and have everlasting life. God didn't send his son here to condemn the world. He sent his son here to save man from this world. 
So whoever believes shall not be condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned where they stand. That's the word of God. That's what John chapter 3 tells us. We know, guys, that the world is changing every day. It's time to make up our minds. That's the, that's the, that's the message we got to be giving people. It's time to make up your mind. Don't wait until the, that last second. Don't be one of those people that you're going to be there at the skin of your teeth. It's time to open our eyes. It's time to be strong right now. Everything that's happening, it's a test for all of us. You ever see that commercial, the one where they play that thing uh, and it just kind of goes like a beat thing and it said this is only a test? That's what's happening in the world right now. That's exactly what's taking place in the world right now. That's the message that God, I believe, is trying to give us. This is only a test. Because you got to make up your mind. You got to stay strong. You're either all in or you're all out. And I know right now, uh, right now, many of us are being tested in many ways. Times with what we're going on, like I said, there's times that, that some of us, we fall into dry patches. We fall into to dry areas in our life. Man, maybe I wasn't reading. I, I was just, me and my wife had a conversation about this the other day. You know, about, about falling into dry patches and about certain things happening. But uh, like what we talked about, I said, we always got to remember that God is there for us, but we got to lift ourselves up. We got to encourage ourselves. Like we can never forget the story of David. We went over that many times when David was out and he was fighting battles with his soldiers and he was fighting out there and, and they were winning battle after battle after war after war and he comes home with all his troops and when he comes home, all their families are gone. Their wives and their children are gone. They're not killed, but they've been taken. And all of David's soldiers got mad at him and they blamed him and they said they were going to stone David. And David's like, man, what happened? Now they turned against me. They want to kill me. David felt down. He was he, he felt bad. And he's like, Lord, what's happening? But he encouraged himself. And that's what we got to do when we fall into these areas. When we start, you know, getting dry in these spots. We got to lift ourselves up and encourage ourselves. I was just, I was telling somebody the other day, I, I was... I was, you know, I seen somebody at, at, at church a while back and, and, you know, they went up to the altar and they rededicated their heart. And I couldn't, and something just came to my mind there. I seen them up there at the altar rededicating their heart and they've been in church for a couple of years now. And that's okay, that happens. You know, I'm not, I'm not faulting them for that. I was glad they went up there. I was glad that, that, that they have that in them, the Holy Spirit, that, you know what, I, man, I, I, I kind of walked a little funny. I got to get right. But this person that went up there, they've been there for years, and I see them up there, and I and I and, and it just started coming to me. I started thinking, like, man, you know, with the with the with the live stream, and with you know, we're not fellowshipping, and we're not having church picnics, and we're not having these church functions, and we're not having these get-togethers anymore. Things are different, and maybe this person fell dry. And you know, we, we you know you know a lot of times when we get dry, you know, I was I, I started thinking about it and I started thinking, man, you know, at times we watch the National Geographic channel and they show that there's animals that come and, and when animals die, they pick the carcasses. They come and they pick at the bones. They come and they pick the meat off the bones of the of the dead animals there. But I was reading that there are some animals like wildebeest and camels and certain animals that they prefer to come and and, and eat the dry bones. And I started thinking, that's exactly how the enemy is. He prefers to come after the dry bones. Because those are the bones he wants. Those are the bones that are vulnerable. And I started thinking, man, this person at some point, maybe they got a little dry and there came the enemy coming to pick at the dry bones. I don't know what she did in her life. I don't know what happened. But the enemy came and he picked at the dry bones. And we got to be mindful of that. We got to be careful. 
we got to keep our minds strong. The Bible tells us part of our armor is the helmet of salvation. We got to keep that helmet on. We got to stay strong. But I praise God, I was glad that person went up there. Rather than that person just falling away and just ending up in a far off country, they said, you know what? And that's only God moving in that person's life that says, you know what? Made a little mistake. But you know what? It's time to get right. That's all right. I still love you. And that's the forgiving God that we serve. We know Peter made mistakes. We know Peter denied God three times. Like I said last time, when Peter was there and, 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 and he's telling Jesus, he's over there trying to, trying to clear his name. It's not going to be me. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to fall away. I'm not going to betray you. I'll always be here till death. Jesus knew he was going to betray him. But the best part of that story is how Jesus wasn't even there trying to trying to debate with him. He wasn't trying to argue with Peter. All he was telling Peter is, Peter, when you come back, when you come back, you're going to strengthen your brothers. He was letting Peter know, you know what? I got a plan for you still, Peter. I still love you. We gotta just, we gotta just let everybody know. We got all those out there that are just maybe just coming across this message. It's time to make up our mind. It's time to get our mind right. It's time to stop playing games with God. We look around us and man, it's just, it's God's bringing a message to everybody. Stop playing games. Get your mind right. And that, that's what we gotta remember. That's, that's the title of the message tonight. It's time to make up your mind. Amen. That concludes the message tonight for the Bible study. And uh, like I said, I just, just you know, want to encourage everybody just to keep, keep fighting the good fight. Amen. Stay strong in this fight. I mean, we're in a spiritual warfare right now like we've never been in before. I mean, the enemy is doing everything he can. The enemy is throwing everything he can at us to try to break us, to try to pull us away, to try to get us to question God or complain about God. I mean, he, he's 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 done a lot to just keep try to try to keep us out of the church, try to keep us from from um, witnessing out there. But I tell you, we, it, it's time to make up our mind. It's time to get right with God. Amen. And we're going to go ahead and close in prayer. Heavenly Father, I just come before you tonight, Lord God. And I just, Father, thank you for your word tonight, Father God, for your anointing, for your touch, Lord God. And we thank you for every person, Lord, that is out there listening, Father. Every person, Father, that had their ear to you, Father. I pray that this message, Father God, that Lord... That they just didn't hear it, Father God. Just that that it was just a, 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 a applied to them, Lord. Father, help us all right now during this time, Lord God, that we're going through, Lord. I know many out there are dealing with heavy situations. Many out there are going through some rough battles and some rough trials right now, Lord. Father, as your word says, Lord God, that that when the when the Disciples were in the boat, Lord God, that the waves were rough, that the winds were strong, that there was a storm. But only you, Jesus, can calm the storm. And Father, we pray, Lord God, that right now you comfort all those out there, our family members and loved ones, Father God, all those out there that are dealing with loss right now, Father. Not only from COVID, but from other things, Lord God, and all these just different things that are taking place, Lord. I pray that you comfort the people out there, Lord. All those that are that are not saved or those that are just up against the fence right now, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you minister to them. That you continue to bring the laborers across their path, Lord God. To give them your word. To give them the gospel. To give them your word and just help them, Father God, to understand that it's time to make up their mind. Father, I pray that you continue, Lord, to use us, Father, as we are tools and, and vessels for you, Father, for your glory. 
Continue to use us in the ways that you want to use us. Continue, Father God, to give us the boldness that, Father, we need at times. Continue to give us the right words, Father God, that the right words come out of our mouth to witness to our fellow brothers and sisters, Lord. Guide us in our conversations with them, Lord. Father, and all those that are serving you right now, our Bible study and all those, Lord, continue to strengthen us all, Lord. Continue to strengthen us physically. Continue to strengthen us spiritually, Father. We need you, Lord. We need you, Father. Continue to pour your blessings upon us, Lord. I pray not only for our families, but our church, our ministry, our congregation, our pastors, Lord. Continue to give us all direction, Father. Father, we thank you, Lord, and we give you the praise. We give you the honor, and we give you the glory. And we, we take this time to thank you in advance for what you're going to do in our lives, Father. Lord, we thank you and we praise you in the precious and mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you, guys. God bless and good night.